Hi, boys and girls. I am so excited to get to do the library with you this week. My name is Miss Lindsay, and today we are going to be exploring one of my favorite books. It is called Rosie Revere Engineer. So I'm going to share my screen with you so that you can read this text this morning. I hope everybody is having a great week. I hope you're learning lots and lots in all of your classes. All right, this is Rosie Revere Engineer by Andrea Beatty, illustrated by David Roberts. Let's read it together. This is the story of Rosie Revere, who dreamed of becoming a great engineer in Lila Greer's classroom at Blue River Creek, young Rosie sat shyly, not daring to speak. But when no one saw her, she peeked in the trash for treasures to add to her engineer's stash. And late, late at night, Rosie rolled up her sleeves and built in her hideaway under the eaves. Alone in her attic, the moon high above, dear Rosie made gadgets and gizmos she loved. And when she grew sleepy, she hid her machines far under the bed where they'd never be seen. When Rosie was young, she had not been so shy. She worked with her hair swooping over one eye and made fine inventions for uncles and aunts a hot dog dispenser, and helium pants. The uncle she loved most was zookeeper Fred. She had, she made him a hat to keep snakes off his head from parts of a fan and some cheddar cheese spray, which everyone knows keeps the pythons away. And when it was finished, young Rosie was proud, but Fred slapped his knee and he chuckled out loud. He laughed till he wheezed and his eyes filled with tears, all to the horror of Rosie Revere, who stood there embarrassed, perplexed and dismayed. She looked at the cheese hat and then looked away. I love it, Fred hooted. Oh, truly I do. But Rosie Revere knew that could not be true. She stuck the hat on the back of her shelf and after that day, she kept her dreams to herself. And that's how it went until one autumn day, her oldest relation showed up for a stay. Her great, great aunt Rose was a true dynamo who'd worked building airplanes a long time ago. She told Rosie tales of the things she had done and goals she had checked off her list one by one. She gave a sad smile as she looked to the sky. The only thrill left on my list is to fly, but time never lingers as long as it seems. I'll chalk that one up to an old lady's dreams. That night as Rosie lay wide-eyed in bed, a daring idea went into her head. Could she build a gizmo to help her aunt fly? She looked at the cheese hat and said, no, not I. But questions are tricky and some hold on tight. This one kept Rosie awake through the night. So when dawn approached and streaks lit the sky, young Rosie knew just how to make her aunt fly. She worked and she worked till the day was half gone, then hauled her cheese copter out onto the lawn to give her invention a test just to see the ridiculous flop it might turn out to be. Strapped into the cockpit, she flipped on the switch. The helio cheese copter sputtered and twitched. It floated a moment and whirled round and round, then froze for a heartbeat and crashed to the ground. Rosie heard laughter and turned around to see the old woman laughing and slapping her knee. She laughed till she wheezed and her eyes filled with tears, all to the horror of Rosie Revere. 
who thought, oh no, never, not ever again will I build something to sputter or spin or build with a lever, a switch or a gear, and never will I be a great engineer. She turned around to leave, but then great, great Aunt Rose grabbed a hold of young Rosie and pulled her in close. She hugged her and kissed her and started to cry. You did it. Hooray. It's perfect. First cry. This great flop is over. It is time for the next. Young Rosie was baffled, embarrassed, perplexed. I failed, said dear Rosie. It's just made of trash. Didn't you see? The cheese copter crashed. Yes, said great aunt. It crashed, that is true. First, it did what it was intended to do. Before it crashed, Rosie, before that, it flew. Your brilliant first flop was a raging success. Come on, let's get busy and go on next. She handed a notebook to Rosie Revere, who smiled at her aunt as it all became clear. Life might have its failures, but this was not it. The only true failure is if you quit. They worked till the sun sneaked away to its bed. Aunt Rose tied her headscarf around Rosie's head and sent her to sleep with a smile ear to ear to dream the bold dreams of a great engineer. At Blue River Creek, all the kids in grade two build gizmos and gadgets and doohickeys too. With each perfect failure, they stand and cheer, but none quite as proudly as Rosie Revere. The end. I really hope that you enjoyed that book as much as I do. We all can be wonderful engineers. All we have to do is try, use our imaginations, and be as creative as we can. I want to offer a challenge to each of you today. I want you to either draw and create something, I want you to make something, or I want you to do something like an engineer would do. Let me give you some examples. Rosie comes up with all sorts of inventions, some of which fix a problem, like the hat that keeps snake the snakes away for zookeeper Uncle Fred, and the helio cheese copter, her great great aunt Rose fly. I want you to think really hard about something that you would like to do, or something that you would like to fix. Maybe something in your house that is broken, or something that you want to make better. Next, I want you to illustrate and draw and create that. Think about how you can fix it. Think of a sketch or a pattern or a blueprint that you can make to show steps on how you want to, to fix or put that item together. That's challenge one. If you don't want to do that one, the next challenge is to make something. Rosie liked to use everyday materials that she found to create her inventions. Think about your house around you and the world around you outside. I want you to wander around on a quest to collect all the objects which are gonna be thrown away or no longer useful, anything that can be recycled. I want you to experiment with those items that you find and I want you to use those to make something creative. Some fun examples that I like to use at home with my children and when I was a little girl would be toilet paper rolls or paper towel rolls when they're all used. You can make so many fun things with those. The ideas and possibilities are endless. Okay, and lastly, I want to challenge you to do something. For example, a paper airplane. You can get stiff pieces or thin card paper, make your paper airplane, find somebody in your house, a brother, sister, cousin, grandparent, aunt, parent. Maybe you can have an airplane flying contest. Make different types of airplanes, make different types of wings, experiment, see which goes faster, see which one wins. Make big ones and small ones. To have an engineer mind, all you have to do is be creative 
and think hard and use imagination. And don't forget, just like Rosie, you may fail at first, but the most important part is to not give up. Thank you all so much for reading this book with me today. I have so enjoyed it. If you make any creative um, different items, or if you go out and do and have a paper airplane contest, or if you make a recycled object, please send us pictures of that so that we can look, that, look at them and see how creative that you all are. Have a great day.